What's, What's up, up everyone? everyone? It is so early. Yes, I was about to say we got here at like 5.45, 5.50 and that is probably not quite a record but it's close to it. It is bright and early before 6 a.m. at least and that is kind of crazy. I haven't even consumed any coffee yet. No coffee? No. I made you coffee. Yeah, but it's really hot, so I'm letting it cool mm -hmm. down a little. But I already have all three embroidery machines going, and we are four business day out of orders. So that's good. That's good. That's really good. There were a lot of days in like I feel like the two and one where people were like placing a lot of orders. So mm -hmm. like there's a lot of orders on those days because we were like it's the last day, it's the last day, and now no more Christmas orders for embroidery mm -hmm. because there's no way that we could turn anything else around. The mail said on Friday, this coming Friday, the, what is it, the 18th, 17th, 17th that that's kind of the last day that they're like semi-guaranteed stuff's going to be there. So we're they're, pushing very hard for Friday for all the things. If we ship things on Monday, I think that they'll still get there in time, but I don't want to push the limits. So I'm telling everyone in here Friday, and if Nick and I have to come on Saturday part of the day, then we're going to do that. We're just gonna see what has to happen to get the orders done in time. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest fear is not necessarily like what we're doing and getting them done on time, but if something gets messed up mm -hmm. by accident, there's no way we'll be able to save, like get a new item in time. So that's kind of out of our hands, but I think if everyone just takes the extra seconds to pay attention, mostly I'm worried about Nick cleaning up the embroidery because I never really I make know. mistakes. I know you never do. So that's why it shouldn't be that big of a stress. But he uses those scissors if you guys ever see. And something could get snipped. The only time I've snipped something I is know. a t-shirt. You never do. But I feel like if it were to happen, now would be the time because we're all like rushing around and that's when mistakes happen. So I just get a little bit nervous. But like you said, he doesn't ever do that. So it shouldn't be a worry. But if that were to happen, I don't think there would, could be anything we could do in our power to get them their item by Christmas. So that is what stresses me out. But hopefully we'll have all of the happy customers this year. Uh, probably unlikely considering it's very hard to please every single person. There's always like one person who doesn't have a good experience, but what can you do? You can have 99%. That's the best I feel like, right? Right. Speaking of unhappy customers, Danielle, that brought up something that I wanted to talk about, which is some of the dark sides of owning a small business. They already saw one of them being at work before 6 a.m. That's not your typical nine to five. <laughs> And that's something that we're not always here before 6 a.m., but we're definitely always here before 7, pretty much. I feel like, did you have other things well, other, on the dark side? Well, what you just said, too, is like, you can't please everybody. Yes. Particularly when you put your heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears into it, and then people are like, I'm not satisfied, I'm not happy. That can sometimes be soul crushing. I had a random thing that I thought about last night that I wanted to talk about on here. Do you want to hold that the whole time or you want to put it down? This? Yeah. I'll hold it. Okay. Well, Here, let's go, let's go sit somewhere because these machines are loud. Okay. In this room? Yeah, we can. There's an embroidery that I've been cleaning up. So cute. Boxer. So, I feel like, not really like the dark side. I'm kind of like taking a little divergent trail, but like, Basically, people always are like, how do you know how to do X or how do you know how to do Y? Like, the people who, like, see us as an inspiration or, like, maybe want to do something similar are always like, well, how do you know how to do these things? And really, <laughs> it's like a fake it till you make it thing. And the scenario I was thinking about was something that really stressed me out and was a huge deal. But now that we've made it over that hump, it's funny to look back on and in the moment I don't think I talked about it because I was probably really embarrassed but now I think it's funny is when we were selling to the biggest store that we've sold to it was a huge deal it was the most exciting thing that has happened to us it was a $16,000 check at one time um, and it was just like a crazy time here at Tails Up Pup and we were all super excited about it so we were willing to do whatever it took to make that happen. So they tell us like, they pick the patterns that they want and they ask us for all this information on those bandanas. I give them, I answer all their questions, but I skipped one. They asked me for the skew of the item and I skipped it because 
I didn't know what that meant. And so she came back and she's like, thanks for all the information, but we need to know this. This is necessary information. And I was like, I don't know what to do, Nick. I don't, I like, don't know what this is. What is Obviously, this I like looked it up and like I had a general idea, but we were so small. We and I guess this is like a crazy thing for us, but our business just doesn't run on SKUs, which like most businesses do. Because now it does. Now it does. But back then it didn't. And that's probably like the first dabble in SKUs for us. So it's like kind of mm -hmm. how we got into that. But. I didn't know what it was. I Googled and it like wasn't very clear, especially for our business. Everything was handmade and like we just didn't use them. So I knew that it was like letters and numbers and that was all I knew. So I made up a SKU, which in turn now, that's basically what all SKUs are made up numbers and letters. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I didn't know how big businesses got those numbers and letters <laughs> and where they came from. So I just made them up. And you were and scared. I was so stressed that she was going to come back and be like, why did you make this up? Like, where did you even get this? This isn't right. But really, it was whatever I made it. And like, that is what ended up being the right thing. But at the time, I was so scared and so stressed. And basically, the moral of the story is, you just like fake it till you make it. We don't know how, like Lauren didn't know how to embroider. Ensley didn't know how to do marketing emails. Like, we didn't know how to run an Instagram. We didn't know how to start a business. But like, when you're tasked with these things and you want to succeed, you'll find a way to figure it out feel like that is the moral of the story. I don't know if I necessarily like the fake it till you make it thing. Fake it till you make it makes it seem like that you're literally like pretending. Yeah. And while it feels like the imposter syndrome sometimes, like you're like, I don't know if this is supposed to be me and like I'm not qualified. We still spent a lot of time like researching, learning the things. For instance, like- Let me change my phrasing. Learn it till you make it. Yeah, learn it till you make it. Um, I think that's better. I, I understand where the fake it till you make it comes from, but yeah, we spent a lot of time learning. It's not like we literally just like did random stuff, whatever, and hoped it worked out. No, we spent a lot of sleepless nights researching things. We really tried to figure out all the different things. So like embroidery, Lauren, Danny, Brittany, they spent all this time trying to learn the craft and perfect it with the skews. Danielle restarted it. We figured out and get, and basically tried to put our best foot forward. Even though we were a little concerned it wasn't right, um, we spent a lot of time researching it. And I feel like that's been every aspect of our business, whether it's marketing, whether it's you know building a website, any of those things. And my biggest tip when I am talking to people um, about their questions about business and things and like growing or starting a small business is always it's so hard to comprehend this, but you can always change things. So like if we would still be doing things, and some things we do, but overall in the big scheme, if we were still doing things the exact same way we were uh, four years ago, Could you imagine? we wouldn't be where we are today. You have to be willing to pivot, to learn new things, to take other people's advice, to learn from your mistakes, or even if they're not mistakes, like some things worked well at that time, but we've changed things to make them work better now. We have more people, we have more customers, we have more orders, we have a whole embroidery business that is like, you know, in addition to these dog bandanas. And, you know, back then all we did was dog bandanas. So we have been willing to pivot and learn and grow, which has allowed us to become what we are today. And I think that as someone who's starting out, even for us, like when we're starting something new or trying to figure something out, if you're not willing to change or if you are setting out for perfection your your chances to succeed are more slim even for like example i had a friend who was building a website and i was like i would suggest not to spend thirty thousand dollars to build a website when you don't even know if one person will buy your product you don't know how you're going to get to them you don't know all the logistics so i would spend the least amount of money to get an okay website one that works one that shows your products and does all of the major key points but don't spend your whole life savings on this website because you want it to look like target's website or mm -hmm. pink lily's website or whatever website you like we are um, big on testing and then like pivoting or modifying and like basically test iterate and basically do that cycle over and over and over again but if you're going to take that strategy like danny said you have to be super willing to pivot because unknown things are going to come up and you're going to have to try to you know be smart and you know make changes and don't get me wrong changes are hard we mm -hmm. talked about that the other day well, cer actually. certain changes can be definitely harder than others 
because per particularly changes when you're like this is working but we need we, we need to try to make a little tweak to this or a major change to this and we're not sure what's going to happen as an example like if you wanted to change we change our bandana sizing early on and we were like well people like these bandanas we're really concerned about you know are they still going to like that size the, si the new sizing and things like that i gotta go embroider you have to go embroider yeah this is a good segment. Well, let's cap things off on the dark side. Are there any things, now that you've been doing this over four years, Danielle, that you'd like to tell the people about the dark sides of owning a small business? Um, I don't think you realize how mean people are on the internet. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of people who, and I feel like for the most part, they would never say it to your face. It's easy to hide behind a screen. Mm -hmm. Um, they're... Yeah, there's just people who say crazy things that you, I think it's so mind-blowing because no one would ever say that in real life, but they're fine to say it on a computer screen. Um, so that's kind of the dark side. I would say just like growing and making money in general is really hard and people don't understand how much time and effort and money you have to put in to mm -hmm. then make money. Uh, that is probably the hardest thing is growing a sustainable business that makes money that you can pay all of your employees and put more money into you know continue to grow and buy inventory i don't think people truly understand that concept from the outside until you're in it um i know i didn't and well particularly the stress that comes along with that i think is really hard to like wrap your head around because ultimately it falls on danielle and us to make sure that we pay all the bills we pay all the employees the business is going to actually make money the next month i think the stress comes in so much of the at least right now for us the unknown it's like we have no idea what 2023 is going to hold and if we do the you know make the same amount of revenue or more than last year this past year then things are going to probably be very good but you don't know are people talk about going to a recession you just these are scary things that you have no idea like the future is not guaranteed and that's a very stressful thing did you see my sweatshirt oh very cute oh my gosh this one's done what is it anti-social yeah, this one i haven't oiled yet so and then we got teach and we got teach okay this is how you oil you do wink, wink, wink. You get your oil. You just do one drop. Actually, I have my wand blower. I don't do this every day, but some days it just needs a little cleaning. There you have it. A cleaned machine. And oiled. And oiled. Danny, are you getting more and more confident doing all of this on your own? Well, I'm actually about to hit a roadblock. A roadblock? I'm gonna do, have done all the things that she had for me, so I'm gonna have to do her job on my own. That's scary. Yeah, but I know how to do that part. You do? Yeah. Good. I've done it before. Just so not so right. you're becoming somewhat independent. Not totally, but somewhat. I'm still a baby. Still a baby? You're not even a toddler? No. Are you just making the dog's name? Is that what you're doing here? Yeah, I'm making what I'm gonna put on the sweatshirt. Like this one says Lucy and Cannoli. And this one's gonna say Winston and Vern. And like before this morning, Lauren made some of these files for me to do these ones. Now I've used all her files, so I have to make my own files. So you, but you know how. Yeah. But I'm not going to do any custom dogs like that one. But I can do the names. The names. We are cruising in here. We got the Christmas pajamas. Lauren's going to make everyone's day with their Christmas pajamas. And look, we even have Blitzen, our nice little reindeer, in here. And then Thanksgiving is not over for some people. Thankful for dogs. Speaking of dogs, what are you doing? Oh, two? Wow. Say, so mommy brought us a bed in here. What are you up to in here? Well, I've been cleaning a lot of embroidery today. I feel like we've got a lot done. It feels like a much longer day just getting here that like extra hour early, like just made it feel like a long day. 
but getting a lot of embroidery done um got all the bandanas done so we're on like a really good path um but besides that i think this is a really fun video i'm glad that we got to share some of like the dark side just uh like you know the black box of what it's like owning a small business if you don't own one you probably don't know um but yeah vlogmas continues we'll see you tomorrow bye